Hello, happy Sunday. Hope you guys are having an amazing weekend. I'm having a wonderful weekend. Yesterday we went to Yapoon, which is a terrible name. It's a really awful name, a town. It, why would you call your town Yapoon? But it's a beautiful place. So names do not represent the, be- the inner beauty. We know that. Don't judge a book by its color. Yapoon is definitely has a great inside story. The cover's not so great with the name, but they have an amazing farmer's market there. And well, it's actually not that amazing. In um, Queensland, it's much more difficult to get organic food than what it is in Victoria. But where there is a will, there's a way. And there was one stall there that had an organic, um, organic produce and it was amazing because there were these beautiful women there was like five or six beautiful hippie goddesses young women all at the store like having a great time dancing and just the most amazing vibes and they live on a permaculture farm together and they were like yeah we just like swim and dance and you know make delicious food all day i'm like oh wow amazing and anyway, I just felt great to eat their food. I actually felt like there was a higher vibration from eating it because not only is it organic, but because of the who they who they were and who they embodied and they had like this lightheartedness to them and this like they were a lot of fun. So yeah, I did that yesterday and today we are chilling at home. I did my Ashtanga practice did meditation which I I've been meditating probably about three years ago I made a commitment to meditate every day and I have meditated every day even on days when I'm traveling there's not been one day where I missed even in Kilimanjaro I would get up early and I would sit and I'd meditate even if it was just for three minutes I was like yep I'm committed to this and recently I've increased it to 30 minutes And I know time is not really a great indicator of like how effective something is going to be. Um, It's definitely like the quality, not the quantity. But with meditation, like having that space to drop in with 30 minutes has made such a huge difference. I noticed even with my practice after I meditate, when I do Ashtanga, um, I can't see who comes online anymore. I can't see your name. Maybe you could pop a comment in so I can see who you are. I'd love to say hello to you. (laughs) And... um, Yeah, since I've increased my time that I'm meditating, now my Ashtanga practice, I'm no longer, I notice that I'm no longer thinking about um, it ending or thinking about the next posture. And I really allowed, like, allows me to drop in, which is pretty amazing. Um, And which is a kind of a segue for what I wanted to talk about today is the, that if you want to, whatever you want like this is like a formula for anything you want you want more money you want a better job you want more time you want a great partner you want a you want a golden retriever whatever it might be like it you must first because you must first work through your own shit because how often have you wanted something and then you've got it and then it's like, okay, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. And you're never happy because there's always something more. Hi, Mealy. Um, there is always something more that you want. And that is because it's not actually the thing that we want. It's that we have something inside of us, some kind of emotion um, that is looking to get filled. And so that's why we create these like these wants and there's a real different thing to like desire that deep desire which i believe has been given to us and that is our roadmap versus i want this i want that i want this i want that and we know there's a different frequency and a different vibration underneath it and if we are constantly going after the next thing the next thing the next thing we'll never feel fulfilled and i know we've all been told this but really feel into this for a moment and, th- and just like, and we're going to go through, we're going to analyze it because the conscious mind is like, wants to 
the conscious mind wants to understand even though it's not able to understand because it's a felt sense thing it's a subconscious it's a body thing and to do to be satisfied with where we are will actually allow us to have more coming in And it's funny because when we're satisfied, we obviously don't even want more coming in, but not to be afraid of that either. And know that you have so many more opportunities, so much more love, so much more money, so much more flow, so much creativity coming into your life. Once you allow yourself to feel the shitty feelings that you feel rather than feeling guilty or shameful about feeling them. And this is the most important thing if you want to do anything creative if you want to have an extraordinary life you must first go inside yourself and you must clean yourself out you know just like you get up in the morning and you have a shower to clean off to to clean your body or you go for a walk and you're dusty and you're sweaty you'll go and have a shower we need to be doing the same thing with our inner world as well So think about during a day, how many times you feel an emotion. Maybe it's like a bit of jealousy because your partner's on their phone and they're not talking to you. Or maybe it's like the lower type of desire where you see like a car that you really want. You're like, why do I have this shitty car? I've got this shitty car and they've got this nice car. And then you're like, oh no, I shouldn't feel like that. And maybe it's like guilt. Oh, why did I eat this? So throughout the day, we build up all of these emotions and often we'll just then squash them down and we're like okay on with the next I'm not going to think about or feel that because I shouldn't be feeling that or thinking that because it's negative and it's going to put me in a negative place but what actually happens when we do that is when we're not feeling what we're feeling is we don't just throw it out we actually squash it inside of us so that's when and you've had probably had this experience before when someone said something or you've been like really triggered about something that you thought about later like that was so small i don't know why i was so impacted by that and that is because you had all these other emotions that you were squashing down and they came up because it was it was like they were just so packed full and any opportunity to release it got released so I, I was um, having a laugh with my partner yesterday because there was one day where I can't even remember what was going on. I mean, it just shows it doesn't even, the story doesn't even matter. But I was so angry and frustrated at Chris. Well, we think it's at somebody, but it's actually not at them. It's our own shit. And I was making dinner and I had a kohlrabi in my hand and I threw it at him across the other side of the room, like really hard. And I was so angry and it just, that is a great example of when like I had some other stuff that was going on in my life at the time. I think that was when I was coming to the end of my um, corporate journey and I was like pretty unhappy, but I didn't know where to go, what to do. I felt frustrated. I was like doing as much as I possibly could, but it felt like it just wasn't getting me that level of peace and satisfaction and joy that I was really looking for. And Chris probably said something smart ass. Um, and so it just triggered me massively. And how that I could have dealt with that is to instead of felt what I was feeling at each moment when I felt the frustration and allowed it to be there and actually learn how to give it love. Because otherwise what happens if we're squashing it down is we probably put shame and guilt on top of that because we think I shouldn't be feeling that. And um, and as we know, it comes up in the form of a kohlrabi being thrown across the room or you screaming at somebody or maybe you cheated on somebody or uh, maybe you spend your money without thinking about it because you you have something else in there that wants to be seen and it's uncomfortable to look at. So we go outwards and we think, okay, well, I'm ex- I'll express it in this form, but that actually doesn't release it. It actually um, perpetuates it and it puts that energy out into the world. And we know that whatever we put out into the world, it comes back to us. So if we're, if we're angry, for example, and we're going to the gym and we're, we're going to the boxing gym and we're just like expressing it and we're smashing it out, 
it's actually not that useful because we're putting that energy out into the world and often we still have stuff that's really stuck in there and we get used to expressing anger angrily outside and that will come back to us and then we'll be like oh the world's an angry place you know you must work you must like have aggression you must protect yourself and that is who we become so it's really important